Tonight on Q2, a big development that could help clear up a murky situation. The only thing they're saying is, uh, we're fixing it, we're fixing it, we're fixing it. Well, after all these months, it's just the same thing. A lawsuit's been filed as residents of a Billings Mobile Home Park continue to deal with dirty water. Plus, staffing shortages take a toll on the homeless. Our good luck with this weather pattern is going to uh, come to an end really quickly. Beds are available and the Livingston Warming Center is ready, but the doors remain shut. We'll have details. And Magic City murals. Research has proven that public art helps the entire, like, the optimism in the town. The city of Billings looks to hire its first artist in hopes of beautifying the city. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. First tonight, a lawsuit takes aim at a dirty and murky problem. For nearly two years now, residents at Meadowlark Mobile Home Park have been dealing with water that looks like this. But many hope the complaint filed today will finally resolve not only this issue, but also another. Residents claim management cut the hitches off their trailers so they couldn't be moved. Our David J has the latest developments. People living at Haven Park are getting some help with the lawsuit. They have two issues. One is that some have had their trailer hitches cut off, they say illegally. The other is the water coming out of the faucet. They say it's still undrinkable and unsafe. I've seen that the kids had the same rashes that I was experiencing. And I finally figured out it was the water. Sadly, this water is now the norm at Meadowlark Mobile Home Park. Steve Woodard lives here and also owns several other trailers that he rents out. Income that's vanished in recent months after Woodard let two families out of their leases. We just come to the determination. I says, I'm going to break your lease. You get your babies where you think it's safe. Gary Devereaux still lives here and says water like this is nothing new. They've had to deal with the problem for almost two years. It doesn't look drinkable when you use it and it burns your skin and blisters people, puts blisters on their scalp and, and skin from showering in it, then there's a big concern there. But finally, there's hope. Billings attorney Teague Westrope has filed a complaint on behalf of six families, including the Woodards and the Devereaux, against Haven Park Management, which owns Metal Arc. We're filing this lawsuit to, uh, to bring accountability here to the owners of the park. The suit alleges that Metal Arc has failed to keep the premises in habitable condition and that management committed actual fraud or negligent misrepresentation by making false or untrue representations about the water condition. But the lawsuit addresses more than just the water. It also accuses the company of unlawfully cutting off the hitches on residents' mobile homes so they couldn't be moved. It's our belief that Haven Park knew that uh, when they were cutting these trailer hitches off of these mobile homes, uh, that these tenants would be left without options uh, to move. Trespassing and destruction of private property. As for the water, Westrop says the DEQ, which tests only for bacteria, only calls the water unpalatable. I don't think that it, it takes an expert uh, to look at that water. The suit was filed early Tuesday afternoon, and Haven Park had not yet received a copy of the complaint. The company plans to comment once it's had time to review the allegations. In Billings, David J, MTN News. The water situation is something residents say they've been living with for over a year. But it first captured the public's attention on January 20th when residents spoke with Q2. The Montana Department of Environmental Quality then got involved and inspectors were on site Monday, January 24th doing tests on the water. However, officials ultimately determined that despite its color, the water was safe to drink. In February, Haven Park Communities said the well system was beginning to show its 60-year-old age and the water filter systems were being replaced. They said the filter systems could take up to a few weeks to fix the issues. And in May, they sent a letter promising all those upgrades had taken place. However, now more than five months later, the problems, as we just heard, have still not been resolved. 
It's been a deadly day on a busy Billings roadway as two people are dead after two accidents within a 12 hour span on Broadwater Avenue. It all started shortly before 7 this morning when the Billings Police Department tweeted that a pedestrian was killed by a vehicle earlier this morning. That incident happened at 6th Street West in Broadwater. The driver of the vehicle left the scene and police are still on the lookout tonight. Police say they're looking for a vehicle with damage to the front end and they did recover a few parts at the scene but don't have a full description of the vehicle. The victim is an adult male but his name or age have not been released yet. Police are asking anyone with information to contact them at 406-657-8200. Then around 1 o'clock this afternoon, a man in his late 30s was killed when he lost control of his motorcycle and crashed near 20th and Broadwater Avenue. Sergeant Jeff Stovall of the Billings Police Department tells us that no other vehicle was involved and it appears that speed was a factor. Police did not identify the rider nor whether he was wearing a helmet. Another pretty nice day today, folks. Meteorologist Matthew Hidalgo filling in for Ed McIntosh tonight, but we are going to still hold on to some of those windy conditions, folks. Take a look at some watches and warnings here. This red shaded area is a wind advisory that is going to be in effect until noon tomorrow, folks. Let's take a look at how some of those windy conditions are going to shape up. We are going to see those stronger wind gusts west and south of Billings, especially in the foothill areas, folks. Timing of the strongest winds for the Livingston and Nye area is going to be tonight through 10 a.m tomorrow remaining foothills tomorrow at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Taking a look at some headlines pushing forward folks. We are going to see some changes on the way. Cooler air with some chances of precipitation. Stick around. I'll have more with the full forecast details coming up here in a bit. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Calling all artists. The city of Billings is searching for a creative individual to take on a new artist in residency contract created to help beautify the city. Art has the power to transform. The ability to take something ordinary and turn it into something extraordinary. Research has proven that public art helps the optimism in the town, the hopefulness. Terry Porta is already changing Billings. One roller, one wall, and one mural at a time. None of my uh, murals actually are one person doing it all. It's always a team of people. I usually will bring in other artists as well to help. Porta has art installations all throughout the Magic City, like murals inside of MSUB and a structural piano. And she recently completed another mural downtown, honoring the lives lost to COVID-19 in Yellowstone County. The spaces are letters from people who've lost people to COVID and a memorial to them. While the majority of the mural is complete, Porta is looking for more community involvement. The mural features a few handwritten letters to lost loved ones from COVID-19, and Porta is hoping to incorporate at least 20 more. And the city wants to bring more works like this to Billings by creating a new artist in residence program called mobilize the magic city. Different places have used artists and residents in order to improve health, safety, economic development, um, public engagement, things like that. While the position may be new to Billings, Elise Monat and others know art like this does a lot more than just beautify a city. It unites a city from deciding what's created to the message to the location. Getting that engagement and feedback from residents through that process really does create a sense of pride in a neighborhood and in a community. The position the position can be filled with one or two artists and comes with a $25,000 stipend. We have a great town full of great artists, so I'm really happy to be one of them. Artists now expanding their canvas from one neighborhood to the next. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. It's another clash between skyrocketing housing prices and the struggle to find workers playing out in Livingston. Livingston's emergency overnight shelter has plenty of beds to fill but will not open as planned today due to staffing shortages. MTN's Jackie Coffin takes us to the warming center to learn more. The bunks are ready. You can see piles of clean sheets, pillows and blankets waiting here for guests. But the beds here at the Livingston Warming Center will have to remain empty for now as the emergency shelter delays its opening, another result of workforce shortages. We are a smaller um, population, but the needs continue to increase at a rate that we're just constantly trying to play catch up to make sure that we have enough space. 
The Livingston Warming Center has a capacity of 20 people per night, a number they often met last year and expect to hit again this year. Um, we have had our first snow in the area, so our good luck with this weather pattern is going to uh, come to an end really quickly. The past two years, Huey and the HRDC have found it hard to hire, just like businesses across the country. And this hiring gap leaves people in the cold. There are a number of different reasons why it's difficult to staff at the shelter, primarily because the work is overnight. Um, and so 6.30 p.m. to 1 a.m. or 1 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. or both, um, that can be really hard to find folks. Montana's housing crisis comes to a boiling point in and around the Gallatin Valley, where the latest realtor reports put a single family home at $869,000. In Park County, that number is around $520,000. For comparison, in Billings, the average single family home listing price is under $400,000. A lot of people from Bozeman um, came over to this area and smaller towns in and around the Bozeman area uh, looking for more affordable housing. And as time has gone on over the last five years, that affordable housing has also dissipated in the smaller satellite communities. Huey says they need to fill at least one more position, needing a minimum of five people to run the Livingston shelter. And they think they will have enough people to open the shelter on November 15th, but they're still looking for others. Good days, bad days, laughter, tears, it all happens at the shelter. In Livingston, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. Tickets for the Montana Lottery's popular annual Montana Millionaire Raffle went on sale this morning, and already more than half of them have been sold. Only 280,000 of the $20 tickets are sold, giving players a better shot at winning one of the $2 million prizes. There will also be a couple of $100,000 drawings, as well as other prizes up for grabs. Lotto officials are expecting remaining tickets to go fast. Last year, they sold out in six days. Still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, taking flight. St. Vincent and Cody Regional Health joining forces as they work to improve health care. We'll have details in tonight's Your Health Matters. Then a little later in sports, the scouts of Bridger aiming to hang a banner as they look to build off their surprise trip to the state tournament from last year. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.